So uh, thanks a lot um, for welcoming me here today. So uh, I am really delighted to represent Stem Cell Technology that sponsors uh, this year again the London Stem Cell Network. And uh, today I'll go through some insights and trends in the PSC field. So um, earlier this year, uh, we ran a survey among PSC researchers to identify these trends and we got uh, actually a great response because more than 550 uh, researchers answered the full survey. So 37% um, of them were PhD students, 27 were postdoc, uh, and 9% were PIs. The others were, uh, for example, lab managers, staff scientists, or even CEOs. So this was, this was quite heavily weighted to the academic sector, which represented 86% of the responses. Industry was much lower at 8%, and the other 6% came from non-profit organization, governmental agencies, etc. So we had a wide reach uh, as we got responses from across the globe with the most significant completion rate from the US at uh, 62%. But a number of other regions also sent their answers like Europe at 32% uh, and Asia at 8% of the respondents. So before collecting data, we wanted to get an idea of the, level, of the level of experience of the survey respondents. And it's actually quite high, as 38% of them identified themselves as being advanced, which is quite interesting, taking into account that the majority of respondents are at the beginning of their scientific career. So just something to keep in mind. So the first question that will be addressed here um, is about technical aspects of PSC culture. So it appears that 81% of the respondents culture their PSC in a feeder-free manner. 4% are, are still using feeders and 15% are doing a mixture of both. So the graph on the left is actually the opposite of what it could have been 13 years ago when m one was launched. Looking at passaging methods, uh, we can see that half of researchers are passaging their cells as clumps. 22% are doing single cell passaging and 22% are doing both. So we can notice that single cell passaging dramatically increased since uh, embryonic stem cells were derived and can be attributed to gene editing where clones are needed for screening purposes. So um, on the right, we asked if people required any additive to their culture. Surprisingly, 26% of them add small molecules to their culture, presumably rock inhibitor, uh, which makes sense as it matches the number of people doing single cell passaging. 17% add antibiotics and 20% add both at the same time. So it means that only a third of the respondents work with no additive at all in their culture. We also wanted to get a better understanding about cell lines being cultured in everyone's lab. So as you can see on the graph on the left, majority of people maintain between one and four cell lines at a time. But some of them maintain many more than that. And we even had two unlucky respondents who mentioned that their lab is working on more than 500 lines at a time, which is a huge number. On the right, you can see where people are sourcing their cells. So half of them come from collaborations or from neighboring labs, a third come from commercial vendors, and a third from public cell banks. Um, of course, this is more than 100% because people usually get their cells from different sources. Uh, fibroblasts are still the main cell type used for reprogramming, but uh, more and more researchers are turning to blood cells or even urine-derived cells. A key question is what people are actually doing with their PSCs. So the most common application is disease modeling, as 65% of the respondents are working on this. But new technologies such as organoid generation or genome editing are also quite popular. Half of researchers are, are using them. Um, a few people are working on scaling of their culture or, or on cell therapy uh, applications. But going back to disease modeling, um, the, the, thir the first thing to do will be to differentiate PSCs into more mature cell types. And here, 
you can see that ectoderm is quite popular. Uh, most of people are working on neural progenitor cells, major neurons, glial cells, neural crest cells. Uh, looking at mesoderm derivative, a lot of people are generating cardiomyocytes, and for endoderm, uh, liver cells are the most popular one. So, in the next question, we addressed cell quality and asked which quality control should researchers consider when culturing PSCs. So, pluripotency itself was identified as the most important one. Gene and markers expression, genome integrity, cell line identity, and morphology also scored quite high. And when we asked about methods to check pluripotency, four key assay uh, were reported by the survey. EB formation, teratoma assay, directed differentiation, and markers expression. <clears throat> so circles can overlap if these assays are combined with each other. So surprisingly, uh, and because pluripotency is a functional assay, uh, markers expression was the top one answer. And actually assessing the expression of SSCA3 or TRE160, which are markers from the undifferentiated state, will not show that your PSCs are able to differentiate into the three germ layers. So EB formation and directed differentiation will be the most suitable assays to get evidence on this point. Then we asked people to rate the statement at, and it appears that 93% agreed that quality control is beneficial to their research. But actually 39% of researchers have only assessed a genetic analysis on their lines once or twice. And a third stated they never performed this kind of QC. So this is interesting here to see that even respondents identified themselves as being advanced with PSCs the majority does not take time to perform this kind of analysis and actually it can be quite important. For example, when performing CRISPR experiments, a lot of people check off-target effects that can affect, uh, that can impact a few base pairs. But this is also key to keep in mind to check also bigger abnormalities that can affect chromosomes at another scale when maintaining PSCs in culture. Finally, we wanted to question the process of cell banking and registration. Only 9% of respondents work on registering their own line. 29% checked if the lines were registered and 63% did not do anything in that sense. So if you are considering registering your lines, you can have a look at the HPH Reg website. Uh, this is the result of the work by Andreas Kurz and colleagues from Berlin University. And uh, it will give you some guidelines. It can be really helpful if you are in this, uh, uh, in, in, in this state of mind. There are also some societies and consortia that tackle PSC culture standardization. And stem cell technology is working very closely with the International Stem Cell Initiative and the International Stem Cell Banking Initiative. Um, so here you can see some projects that uh, these societies are, are uh, working on. And uh, if you are interested, I would highly recommend you to read the past publication of uh, both of these groups. It's, it's really insightful. Another fantastic resource uh, emerged from a collaboration between nature research and stem cell technology. So we held panel discussions with experts on cell quality all the talks are available on demand on our website following the link that is mentioned on this slide. Uh, I can also send it to you on the, on the Slack channel if you want. Um, feel free to have a look. That's, that's quite interesting to, to listen to them. So to end this presentation, um, I just wanted to mention that you can get the full survey report um, following this link. So uh, please feel free to have a look. And um, I want to thank you all for listening and I'm happy to take your question now. Right. Thanks, uh, Camille, for um, this very nice talk. Uh, I find it very interesting because I myself uh, involved in uh, uh, the report in stem cell culture and uh, I know very well uh, the, um, um, the challenges that we face on a daily basis 
And um, I mean, I have a view, I, I was particularly fascinated about the slide where you show the applications of, uh, current applications of uh, uh, PSC's research. Uh, and I do have an idea about where we are going in terms of applications and future applications. Just I wanted to have your feeling as well. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not surprised, for instance, that disease modeling is one of the, uh, most, uh, uh, the most famous applications for these type of cells. But also, I think that especially for gene editing tools application, that proportion is going to increase drastically over the next few years. And the fact that uh, uh, the, the, the recent Nobel Prize in uh, Physiology and Medicine uh, highlighted even more the usefulness of these techniques is definitely going to help this increase of proportion. What's your view on that? Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I mean, more and more people are working on genome editing on PSCs. And a, a few years ago, this was, this was quite difficult, uh, technically speaking, to perform gene editing on PSCs because uh, PSC doesn't, uh, do not like to be passed as single cell, as you know. And um, uh, it was kind of difficult to, to transfect them. Uh, and to perform CRISPR experiments, but it's not the case anymore. We do have nice technologies uh, that are available to perform gene editing uh, that are quite efficient. So uh, I, I do agree, this is a powerful model that scientists can now be, can, can now use to, to also perform gene editing. So definitely agree. And I think stem cell technologies, if I remember correctly, had some, um some uh, products or research going on about uh, CRISPR editing, I think is. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, uh, so we do have a, a, a full portfolio to, to help researchers to perform gene editing experiments, uh, which is called Architect. Yeah, so that's good to know also for our yeah. audience in case someone is interested can reach out to you guys and have more. Yeah, of course. And also, I mean, um, I really want to insist on, on performing uh, single cell passaging because you, you, you know that routinely speaking, we do not recommend to perform yeah. single cell passaging, but for CRISPR experiments, it, it's definitely recommended. Uh, so that's also important to select the right reagents. And at stem cell technology, we developed uh, one reagent that help um, uh, performing single cell passaging, which is named Clone R, and uh, which will give you great results if you, if you want to, to go through these experiments.